Have you ever wondered what would happen if two iconic villains from different galaxies clashed in an epic battle? I have. Way too much. <laughs> What's that? That's yeah, just Cyberman attacking Roosevelt. Marvel's recent What If animated series has done a good job of expanding the MCU without creating too much confusion. But what if we took things one step further and crossed over two completely different universes? In this video, I've challenged myself to create a What If movie poster mashup of the ultimate face off between Darth Vader and Dark Lord Sauron. Yeah, I've never made a Sauron poster before, so I got my niece to make one. But why is he smiling? Today's video is sponsored by Nvidia Studio and Samsung, and this poster mashup will be created using the Samsung Galaxy Book 3 Ultra featuring the RTX 4050 laptop GPU. See the link in the description for more info. Alright, pretty excited for this one, but I already know it's going to be a toughie. Let's set the scene and lay down a base plate, and I've decided to go with Mordor for the location of choice. So I've got some nice appropriate dark volcanic rock, plenty of detail and texture, this will work nicely. Star Wars and Lord of the Rings are easily two of my favourite movie franchises. I've had the privilege of designing several officially licensed Star Wars poster designs, but have yet to get an official Lord of the Rings poster out there, but one day hopefully. Okay, they're pretty much in place, so we're just going to add a bit of background colour and then make a few tweaks to the lighting and colours of the rocks. They're definitely not going to stay this dark, but until I have a better idea of the overall lighting setup, this will do for now. Now fortunately, to save time, I've got this background which I made for a different project. I can drop this in and it should be perfect for this piece. Let's drop it below our layers, flip it, and we'll just resize and then position it. About here looks good, let's add a little bit of blur, and I'm just going to mask away the bottom with a soft round brush to create a blend. I'll tell you what, I'm pretty chuffed I remembered about that background because it's definitely going to have saved us a lot of time. Using some colour fill layers just to paint in some background light. Let's alter the brightness and contrast of this Mount Doom layer. And then instead of a soft round brush, I'm going to use this brush to give us a bit more of a smoky texture until we get something like this. I think we've got the background in a decent enough place for now. So let's move on and introduce our first villain. First up, we're going with Darth Vader. And I've got the perfect spot for him. Vader finally has the high ground. You are the chosen one! Then we'll use a combination of adjustment layers to match the lighting and colours to the scene. And I'm not a fan of this cloak, so let's replace this with a new one. I think this one will work better. And paint some shadows. And a little bit more overall shadow work. And then I'll create a solid colour fill layer. Clip that to our character and then select a pale red. Just alter the underlying layers. Set the blending mode to linear dodge and then paint in some highlights. Cool, still pretty dark overall, but we'll fix this later. Let's take a quick break to hear from the sponsor of today's video. If you want the best experience in Photoshop, then make sure to look at Nvidia Studio validated laptops like this Samsung Galaxy Book 3 Ultra. Experience superior performance with these supercharged laptops wherever you go, and pack power and epic picture quality into a rucksack with their slimline design. Unleash your creativity and enjoy superb image quality on the super tall Pinsharp 16 inch dynamic AMOLED 2X display. And with the incredible incredible power of Nvidia Studio at its helm, this platform ensures the best experience in creative applications. It achieves this by utilizing the GPU to unlock more performance, more features and better stability with Nvidia Studio drivers. Did you know that Photoshop features a ton of GPU accelerated effects, so it's really handy to have an RTX 40 series laptop GPU to effortlessly handle features like super resolution AI upscaling, or when you have complex adjustments to make using Photoshop's neural filters. There are over 30 GPU accelerated features such as Blur Gallery, Liquify and Smart Sharpen that enable photographers and artists to modify and adjust images smoothly and quickly. And the RTX 4050 laptop GPU can handle it all thanks to its dedicated AI hardware. Let's make a lightsaber. I've created so many lightsabers over the years but I can never remember how I've done it. Probably different every time. For this one I've got a soft-ish brush and then I'm just going to use the layer styles to add some inner glows and outer glows. And hopefully we get something somewhat decent. That's probably a good enough starting point, let's move that into position. Now the tricky thing here is with the original figure, the lightsaber's at a bit of an awkward angle. If I replicate that, it's just going to look too small. Though I'll see if I can get away with making it a bit bigger without it looking too odd. He's also holding it in his left hand, so I'm sure I'll get called out on that. Worst crossover ever. Okay, does that look weird? I can't tell. I'll leave it for now, but maybe needs to go a bit shorter. 
Now we need some red highlights given off from the lightsaber. We'll set that to screen, then just paint in some highlights. A little bit of lightsaber glow. Okay, cool. I think Vader's gonna need all the help he can get, so let's add in a few stormtroopers as well. I'll start by altering the brightness and contrast, and then play with the selective colors adjustment layer. And a color fill layer for some red highlights. Bit of shadow. And then we'll do the same for the other one. I haven't fully developed the lighting of the whole scene yet, so I'll probably be coming back to these guys. I just want to get them to a decent place where they look somewhat part of the scene. Okay, we're switching over to the other team, but we're not going to start with the big boss yet. First, we'll add in a few orcs. Or are they goblins? I don't know. So what's a goblin? How long are you going to be, mate? I'm thinking something like this for the composition. And once again, it's just a case of blending them with the scene. There's many different adjustment layers you can use to achieve these results. But over time, with some experimentation, you generally develop a technique that works best for you. Cool, they're looking a bit more planted in the scene, but they're blending in with the rocks too much. So I'll paint in some layers of light to help create some separation. We'll paint in a little bit more light and smoke here just to bring out that rock shape and create a bit more depth and give it some more layers. Okay, that's a decent start, but we need some more drastic effects. I've got this smoke layer here and I'll use the color range tool to pick out those highlights. And we're just gonna find a nice position for these thicker layers of smoke. Slight color tweak. We'll mask away the bits we don't want using a soft brush and just reveal this rock a bit more. Okay, I think it's time. Let's get our last character in there. Whee, there he is. Right, let's flip him and then uh, we'll find a position for him. Hang on, how tall is Sauron? How tall is Sauron? Oh, nine foot two in the films, apparently. Okay, I think I've made him too big, but uh, we'll use some artistic license. Kind of looks like he's stepping onto this rock, which I think sort of works. And unfortunately, we've got the smoke to kind of shroud it. Painting a little bit of shadow. And I'll use an exposure adjustment layer to paint in some highlights. And then I'm just going to add all the bells and whistles, repeat a lot of the same processes and just try and bring it home as best I can. Okay, so here's what we got. As predicted, pretty challenging, bringing this one across the finish line. Lots of subtle changes were needed in order to make the composition click a little better. A slightly bigger change and something I tried to ignore was Sauron's pose. It was just feeling a bit too static somehow and wasn't filling the correct spaces. So that's something I did swap out. Overall though, good bit of fun. It's always a pleasure to work on anything based on Lord of the Rings or Star Wars, which have been a huge source of inspiration over the years. So who do you think wins? Let me know in the comments. Thanks once again to Nvidia Studio and Samsung for sponsoring this video. I've had a blast these past few weeks creating posters on the epic Galaxy Book 3 Ultra. I'll leave a link in the description so you can check it out for yourself.